Over the past six months, Warren Buffett increased his position in Sirius XM by 40% and now owns 27% of the company. This company is undergoing a merger with itself and there is the possibility of making money by arbitrage and also a short squeeze. Wait, what? A merger with itself? Yes, this is one of the most complex corporate structures I have ever seen. I spent days trying to understand it, how Formula One, Atlanta Braves and Ticketmaster was once part of the same company and how all of this integrates into the empire of John C. Malone, the second largest private land owner in America and who controls 49% of this company. This deal is supposed to simplify things and we can also profit from it just like Warren Buffett and Seth Gorman another billionaire value investor who owns 9% of Liberty Series XM. Value investors don't usually like companies with a lot of debt and this one is drowning in debt. This should not be an issue because this is the investing style of John C. Malone and also this company has a high cash flow generation. What value investors like instead are moats and this company has a very strong one. It is raining so it's better we go inside. Sirius XM did not always have a moat and was not always a cash generating machine. In the 1990s, there were two satellite radio companies that were created, which dominated the market, Sirius Satellite Radio and XM Satellite Radio. These two companies competed against each other and they had a duopoly in the market. You see where I'm going with this. But Satellite Radio was not an easy business to launch and to operate. With terrestrial radio, it is easy to set up the antennas, the amplifiers, the whole infrastructure in order for the business to operate. So if let's say you're listening to the radio, whether it's AM or FM, you just have to tune in to the right frequency and you're going to get the signal. It is quite an easy business to operate to those businesses to make money, they sell ads. So you are listening to the radio. Sometimes you have a song and then you have an ad, you have another song, you have the news and an ad. So you keep getting these ads. That's how these businesses make money. With this business has limitation because if you're in a certain area and you're capturing the signal of a certain frequency, once you leave that area, you don't capture that signal anymore and you're going to miss it. For example, you're going to a trip somewhere else, you're listening to a program in your car, but once you leave that area, you cannot get the signal again. And also the quality is not that good. If you are going in the wilderness, you're not going to get any signal at all. That's where satellite radio solved this problem. Because with terrestrial radio, everything is on earth. With satellite, it's in space. As I told you, it is a costly business to launch and to operate. Today, it is Quite easy, we can say, to send satellites to space, but 20 years ago, that was not easy. It was costing a lot of money to send satellites to space. So these companies, they had to find another way in order for them to make money. And they did that for a subscription business. But the competition continued with the terrestrial radio stations. That was the main competition because it is easier for you to just listen to an ad rather to subscribe to something. That's why we have more people watching YouTube for free with the ads rather than paying for YouTube premium without the ads. They found a way to differentiate themselves from the competition and that was by partnering with the auto manufacturers. Every new car that was purchased had a default satellite radio in it with a trial subscription and many people actually continued to pay after the trial ended. Some cars had XM radio, others had Sirius radio. So they were competing not just with the terrestrial radio stations but also with each other and that was costing them a lot of money. They took a lot of debt to set up the infrastructure and to fight each other and to compete with each other. And they were both on the brink of bankruptcy. And that's where they decided that it was best to merge. From a duopoly, now we had a monopoly. Sirius XM was born as a single company operating satellite radio in the United States of America. But the problem did not get solved because the financial crisis of 2008 happened. That's where John C. Maloney got involved. He lended the company 530 million US dollars in exchange for 40% ownership. And gradually he increased his ownership through private transactions and also through open market purchase. And that's how today he's the largest shareholder of Sirius XM. Usually when such deals happen, the old shareholders are wiped out. Even if let's say the company went bankrupt, if you're an old shareholder of the company, Everything you own, most of it is going to zero. But for the new shareholders now, they have a company with a much better balance sheet. 
And with Chelsea Maloney coming into the business without the competition, with infrastructure costs getting lower and lower, the two businesses now as one flourished. Now you might be wondering why the US government allowed this merger to happen. Why did the government allow a monopoly to happen? First of all, the two businesses were going bankrupt. So it was one of the best things to do in order to save both of them. And secondly, because the US government saw that they were not going to be a monopoly anymore because there was a new competition, the internet. The major competitors of Sirius XM today are Spotify, Apple Music, Audible, and even YouTube. And that's why it's the right time to smash the like button to so show to YouTube that you are enjoying this video. In 2008, Sirius XM acquired Pandora, a music streaming service. And today, Sirius XM has 34 million subscribers. This number is not growing that much. Actually, if you look over the past few years, the number has been declining slightly. That's because they have raised prices. Revenues peak in 2022 and it's not declining that much. Now it is floating around 8.8 .8 billion US dollars. You look at the free cash flow of the company, it has been declining. Capital expenditures has been increasing. But still 1.2 billion US dollars per year in free cash flow, that's around 13% profit margin. This is good in my opinion. Much of the expenses also come from debt. If you look at most of the companies that John C. Maloney controls, owns, or even has influence in, you will see that most of them are heavily indebted. For example, Curate Retail. And there is another theme you can see in most of his companies. They are named Liberty. He's a libertarian. So Liberty Latin America, Liberty Global, Liberty Sirius XM, Liberty Media, Liberty TripAdvisor. It means that he's someone who will try his best not to pay taxes. So what he does instead, he finances his companies with a lot of debt. This reduces his tax expenses because debt usually is not taxed. But of course, the companies then don't have such a good balance sheet anymore. Liberty Media doesn't own just Sirius XM. They also own Formula One and Live Nation. All three companies are under one single entity. So if you look at Liberty Media today, they are the parent company to these three companies. But you can also invest in tracking stocks. This is different to let's say Berkshire Hathaway. In Berkshire Hathaway, if you're investing in the company, you have to buy everything. You cannot invest in Geico separately. You cannot invest in Berkshire Hathaway Energy separately. You cannot invest in BNSF separately. You buy the whole company, the whole conglomerate. In the case of Liberty Media, you can invest in different tracking stocks. For example, Liberty Series XM, LSXMA, LSXMB, LSXMK. These are the tracking stocks for Sirius XM. While they are tracking stocks for Formula One Group, tracking stocks for Live Nation. So the next question might be, why free tracking stocks for Liberty Sirius XM? It all comes to the voting powers of these shares. For example, the Liberty Sirius XM Series A shares, LSXMA, this has one voting right. The B shares, which is mostly owned by John C. Maloney has 10 voting rights. That's how he has control over the company. And the Series C shares, the one ending with K, it has zero voting rights. If you look at my portfolio on eToro, you will see that I own both the Series C and the Series A shares. There is no particular reason for that. I just decided maybe it's a good idea to buy both of them. And, and this is not sponsored in any way, but you can always follow and copy my investments on eToro. I am an elite popular investor there. You can have a look at my portfolio. If you like my strategy, you can copy my investments. For Warren Buffett, it makes sense for him to buy Class A and Class C shares separately because he's buying a lot of shares and this can cause liquidity issues. If you're buying a lot of shares, you need to find the shares. And if he buys only one class, a lot, the shares are not available, the prices are going to go up. So it's better for him to buy Class A and Class C shares. You can also buy the Series shares. And this is Series XM as a company itself, without Liberty. So Warren Buffett has also bought the shares, but this might be because of the deal that is going on and for tax purposes, he has done this. But 84% of Siri, Sirius XM, is owned by Liberty Sirius XM. But when you look at the stock price of the two companies, you will see that there is a spread. So if you look at the market cap of the two companies, one of them should be 84% of the other. So Sirius XM, Siri should be bigger than Liberty Sirius XM because it is 100%, the other is only 84%. But it is much more expensive than Liberty Sirius XM. And to understand why this spread exists, we need to look at the balance sheet of the two companies. At first glance, it seems that Liberty Sirius XM 
with 29.9 billion US dollars in assets and 10.1 billion US dollars in equity, has a better balance sheet than Sirius XM, that is Siri, with only 600 million US dollars in equity and 13.5 billion US dollars in assets. But we need to understand what actually are these assets because the math doesn't add up. And it has to do with accounting. If you look at the balance sheet of Sirius XM, you will see that they have goodwill around 3 billion US dollars and also intangible assets. These are FCC licenses. But then if you look at Liberty Sirius XM balance sheet, and here you have to be careful because the balance sheet, it is for Liberty Media. So you don't take into consideration Formula One and Live Nation. You will see 15 billion US dollars in goodwill and also over 8 billion US dollars in FCC licenses. And these are categorized as unamortized assets, unamortized intangible assets. What is actually goodwill? Whenever you are buying a company, if let's say the book value of the company or the assets minus the liabilities is 10 billion US dollars, but you're paying 13 billion, the 3 billion you're paying extra, this is counted as goodwill. And it is added as an asset, an intangible asset on the balance sheet. That's why you have the goodwill there. But since they are the parent of this company, they owe 84% of it because of accounting, the goodwill is never amortized. So it will stay the same forever, but this should not be the case. Besides, goodwill is here only for accounting purposes. By itself, it doesn't represent any value. As for the FCC licenses, it is the same. Only with Siri, they are amortized. But for the parent company, they are not amortized. But these are the same licenses. So the extra intangible assets with the licenses doesn't have any value, doesn't have any real value. It's just there on the balance sheet. So in reality, the balance sheet of Siri is better than that of Liberty Sirius XM. And this is because the parent company has additional debt on its balance sheet. Whenever we are calculating the intrinsic value of a company, we look at how much cash flow the company can generate over its lifetime. We discount these cash flows and then we add the net cash of the company. Because in theory, this is the amount of cash that the company can return to shareholders over its lifetime. We do the same thing for these companies. But here we have to take into consideration that only 84% of series owned by Liberty Sirius XM. In addition to that, you have to add the cash held by the Pirate Company and remove the debt held by the Pirate Company. And you will see that because of this extra debt, Liberty Sirius XM should be price lower compared to Siri. And it's not just because of the 84% ownership. That's why the market understands this and Siri is priced higher compared to Liberty Sirius XM. And this creates a spread. And one of the reasons why this merger is happening is to remove this spread. And one way we can profit from a spread is by arbitrage. What exactly is arbitrage? Let's say there is a stock being sold both in New York and in London. Taking into consideration all currency exchanges, taking into consideration all fees, the shares in London are traded lower compared to that in New York. What you can do is that you buy the shares in London, let's say for $100 a share, and you sell them in New York at $105. So you make a 5% profit. This is free money you're making. This is called arbitrage. Another way you can make arbitrage if a deal is happening, let's say the acquisition price is hundred dollars but the stock price today is only ninety dollars you can buy at ninety dollars and then you take a profit as hundred dollars once the deal closes this is another type of arbitrage Warren Buffett has been doing this type of arbitrage a lot and the last one he did was with Microsoft acquiring Activision Blizzard he invested in Activision Blizzard and he knew that eventually the price that Microsoft was paying, he was making money on the spread by arbitrage. How will the merger happen? Liberty Media is going to split Liberty Sirius XM, which will then acquire all the shares of Siri, Sirius XM, through an all stock transaction. For every 8.4 shares of Liberty Sirius XM that you own, it doesn't matter whether it's class A, class B, or class C, you're going to obtain one share of Siri. Say so you own 8,000 class A shares and you own 400 class B shares, everything will be converted to 100 Siri shares. 
So it doesn't really matter which class of shares you own, everything will be converted at the same rate. And where did they get that 8.4 figure? They work on a plan to equalize the two balance sheet, taking into consideration the extra liabilities of the parent company. And these extra liabilities are counted as diluted shares. In a way, they increase the number of shares of the parent company. And so how many shares there are in total, taking into consideration that it's only an 84% ownership. So they equalize both balance sheet. Series shares are around $4 Three cent today. And if you multiply it by 8.4, you will have $33.85. But you look at LSXMA, it is valued at only $29.63. This means that there is a spread of around 14%. If you own the shares of Liberty Series XM today, the Series A shares, and then it is going to be converted into series shares, you get more money because the shares are valued at $29.63 today. But when the conversion happens, let's say it happens today itself, the shares are going to be valued at $33.85. So there is this spread. In a way, you're making money for free. This is one form of arbitrage. Arbitrageurs have attempted to take advantage of this spread. In order for them to make money, they have to lower the spread. So how do they do that? They can buy the shares of Liberty Series XM and then they short the shares of Siri. How exactly shorting is done is that they have to borrow the shares from someone and then they sell it in the open market. Later on, if they are right and the price goes down, they buy the shares back, return it to the person, to the rightful owner. But let's say they sold the shares at $100, but they are buying it back at $90. So they make a 10% profit. Of course, this is a gross profit. They have to pay an interest because they have borrowed the shares. And right now, 25% of the float of Siri is short. What is the float? It is all the shares of the company that is publicly traded. So we say that 84% is owned by Liberty Series XM. This is not considered as float because it is not traded. It is owned by the company. But the other 16%, this is float. So 25% of float that is traded, it means that 25% of all these shares eventually have to be bought back. If the short sellers want to make money, they have to eventually buy back their shares. This is how shorting works. There is these two transactions that have to be made. You have to sell the shares after you have borrowed them, and then you have to buy them back. And with this deal happening, many of these shares will need to be recalled because the owners of the shares, they would want to exercise their voting rights. And this can lead to something that we call a short squeeze. A short squeeze happens when the short sellers are not finding enough shares for them to buy back. And if all of them wants to make profits, they will eventually have to buy back their shares. And whenever you are buying shares and there's not enough shares for you to buy, of course, the prices of these shares are going to go up. This is what we call a short squeeze. Since the conversion rate, the 8.4, doesn't change at all, it means that even the shares of Liberty Series XM, when the deal goes through, when the conversion actually happens, and if really a short squeeze happened with Siri, the spread is going to actually increase and you're going to make more money eventually. Let's say now the shares are $33. We have a short squeeze, it goes to $40. If you buy Liberty Series XM at 29 today, eventually you're going to be selling at $40. You could profit from either Siri or Liberty Series XM shares, but it is better you do it for Liberty Series XM. Because this short squeeze, it is always a bonus. Don't bet on that. You don't know what is going to happen. It is better to bet on the arbitrage. There is always more certainty in arbitrage rather than a short squeeze. But in this case, if the best case scenario happens, you have arbitrage and you have a short squeeze at the same time. It is an old video, but if you want to understand how short selling works, how to profit from it, please have a look at this video. Have a nice day and goodbye.